So for air cooling the 5950X, I have Noctua's NHD15. I got three 140 millimeter fans on this twin tower heat sink, along with three intake fans. And I do have three exhaust fans, and it's all housed in the Corsair's 4000D case. And just for reference, I'm using the first motherboard I've ever purchased. It's a Asus Prime X470 Pro, and it does the job just fine. But you can see right here, it's just a simple all-core overclock. The CPU core ratio I have set to 4,500 megahertz. And this is after a few hours of playing with the frequency and the voltage. And the voltage I've settled with so far... I've only had this chip for about 24 hours. This is at 1.19375 volt. So I just changed those two things. Now for me, this simple all-core overclock is stable. What do I mean by stable? In my head, if I can run Cinebench R23 for 30 straight minutes, you can see right here this test stability for 30 minutes, I'm considering that stable which with this frequency and voltage, it is stable. And you can see right now we are idling at about 35, 36 degrees, which is pretty good. So we'll fire up a Cinebench run here. We'll see how many watts we pull from the wall and we'll see how high the temperature gets on air cooling with this voltage at this frequency. You can see right there, it is pulling about 212 watts, 213 watts. And the 5950X really rips through this uh, this scene. But again, all core overclock 4500 at 1.19 volts. And you can see right there, almost 30,000. And if we get rid of a few background tests and get rid of that core attempt that I had on the screen, let's do one more Cinebench run, see if we can break 30,000. Now I've used higher frequencies before, but I can only get through about three minutes before my computer crashes at 4.65 megahertz. I just hit thermal TJ max at 90 degrees. So this is my stable all core overclock. And you can see right there, we did break 30,000 on Cinebench 23. Folks, thanks for watching. As always, I'm going to see you in the next video.